A silicon chip used in an integrated circuit of a microcomputer has a mass of 5.68 milligrams. How many silicon atoms are present in this chip? Let's try working this out. I'm going to try to use as many of the techniques we used yesterday as we can. That's a good thing to, to work out. Let's see here. So centa would be a hundred. So this is a thousand. Precisely. Yeah, that's right. So, um, this is not the answer we're expecting. Right. right. So, I need to um, say this times this one. Good. That's right. I think that's going to, to work out for you. Let's work that out a little bit more systematically. So, you used a lot of good techniques here. Um, what were our starting units on this problem? 5.68 milligrams. Of silicon. Silicon. Good. And it's good that you wrote that down. What are our target units? Right, and I don't think you wrote that down, and that would have helped us to be more systematic. So over here on the right-hand side of the piece of paper, I should always write down the target units. That's, uh, so before we do any conversion ratios, we have to have the starting and the ending units, not just the starting, but also the ending units. All right, now these conversion ratios went well for you. You put in these milligrams to cancel these milligrams. Then you got this from the periodic table, so that was good, and that cancels these. But these units still don't match our target units. So, what unit should I put down here? And up here. And I think you've already written off to the side that one mole of silicon is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Last time we said this would be 10 to the 23rd individuals, but for the particular problem, you should plug in the appropriate word for individuals. And that's what you did here. The individuals here are atoms. 
of silicon. I think that's exactly what you were saying. So, so should we be multiplying by this number or dividing? Well, we should be multiplying. But the best way to see that is to do this systematically like this. Is this 6 0.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So I would put all of these down before doing any calculations. That way it's easiest to check your work. OK, um, so now we can do the whole calculation in one step. Let's see if we get the right answer. Let's actually make a prediction, first of all. We should get into the habit of making a prediction. What can we predict about the answer to this question? Can you make any kind of prediction about the answer to this question before doing any calculations? Yeah, will it be big or small? Big. Yeah. Why is it going to be big? Because we have a ordinary uh, sized amount in milligrams, but there's tons and tons and tons of atoms in just a couple of milligrams. So we should be expecting a very big answer. I think that's maybe how you kind of figured out that your first answer was wrong, or part of it, because you got a tiny answer. Um, but we would expect to have lots of atoms in just a few milligrams. All right, so it's always good to make a little bit of a prediction. All right, so now we can do the calculation. Oh yeah, please go ahead. Even with in my stuff, I never do the calculus and I just skip the. Uh, I'm sorry. In the, what, what did you say? If I was on my own, right. I never do the uh, in the end of the um, problem. Oh, but okay. Was, you mean just do the setup? Yeah. Okay. I actually would recommend doing it because uh, even just uh, using your calculator right can sometimes be confusing. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's the way. Hopefully, you'll be doing problems that have answers, so then you can check your answers. Mm -hmm. And then also you can see if your answer matches your prediction. Okay, so let's write that answer down. Atoms of silicon, good. And that does match our prediction, that's a huge answer. So you, um, you remembered most of the techniques that we had used yesterday. The one thing that you weren't doing that we should start doing is always writing down the target units, because that's the only way to know when you're done writing down conversion ratios. I don't remember if yesterday we ever had to do three ratios in a row, but here we had to do three conversions in a row, and that's not unusual. You might have to do four or five ratios in a row, so you, won't, you don't know how, whether you're done until you've written down your target units. Um, also, I think we should probably, let's review, there's a couple metric prefixes that come up so much that everyone's expected to know them. So, for example, what would be the conversion between meters and kilometers? One meter is better than kilometers. Like this? Now, which is the big unit? Kilometer. Okay. Notice how much easier it is to figure stuff out if you just write down who's the big and who's the small. There should be many small units in one big unit. Okay. Well, we have, it's important to keep going over that because that's a very common mistake. Okay. And one little mistake like that can mess up all your work in the lab. So it's very important to be comfortable with that. All right. So many small units in one big unit. So this would be one good ratio between these, 1,000 meters in a kilometer. Now, how about, uh, so we'll erase this. How about meters and centimeters? What's the conversion between those? Hundred centimeters is one meter. Many small units and one big unit. Um, centa is Latin for 100. Like there's 100 years in a century, right? So this shouldn't be too hard to remember. Um, uh, uh, centa means 100. You know what this stands for? Millimeter. Yeah, so M stands for milla. So what would be this conversion? Um, one meter is 
many small units in one big unit. Okay, so at first you weren't quite sure whether this should be 100 or 1,000 on this problem, but centa is 100, because century is like 100, so this would be 1,000, all right. Um, so these come up so often that people are expected to just have these memorized. So it's worth having this in a piece of paper and just memorizing these conversions. There's other metric conversions though too, like nano or giga or um, mega or whatever. Those you might not have memorized, but you should have, hopefully you'll have a textbook where you can look them up, you can look those up. Of course, we would have the same if this was grams. If there's a thousand meters in a kilometer, then there's a thousand grams in a kilogram or even there's a thousand seconds in a kilosecond, even though that would be a kind of weird way to talk about things. Uh, we mentioned last time that you should keep track of all the problems that we do and go back and do them again. So you should go back and do that problem again. 